Think back 40 years. What was happening in the world? Well, we had the US Watergate scandal, disco music, bell-bottom fashion, and the first personal computer was created. In the Caribbean, independence was sweeping across the islands and nationalism resided heavily in the minds of the political elite. It's now the year 2016 and we're more globally connected than ever before. There's a constant threat of terrorism. We just saw a plane circling the building. The climate is changing and Usain Bolt has been immortalized as the fastest man to ever live. Coming after him, he's immortal now! What do you think is happening 40 years into the future? Are we prepared for the year 2050? How will the region cope with unforeseen changes in global events? How will our societies evolve? Are we preparing the most appropriate strategies for our long-term sustainability? What we do know is that the future is full of uncertainty. Here, we present to you four Caribbean scenarios constructed through research done by the Center for Resource Management and Environmental Studies at the UWI. The scenarios were created to assess how different socioeconomic futures fit into global climate projections. This way, the Caribbean can have a better understanding of its mitigation and adaptation options. Cool Runnings 2050 on the international stage, Brazil, Russia, India and China dominate global trade. The removal of all trade barriers forces the Caribbean to unite in order to survive. The region operates under the Caribbean Single Market and Financial Treaty, which was signed in the year 2022, led mainly by Jamaica and Trinidad. Most economic activity comes from high-end luxury tourism, specialty agriculture, and micro-technology manufacturing. In this scenario, business is likely to be a key driver of regional development in the Caribbean. As a result, economic growth is likely to play a significant role in terms of the regional development agenda. Small lenders in the Caribbean are likely to face issues in relation to urbanization, largely overcrowding, um, and other housing-related issues. Given the important role played by businesses in the Caribbean, environmental management is likely to play a very small role in terms of the management of environmental capital and the management or reaction to um, natural disasters. In this scenario, public goods as we know them now, such as health, education, and transportation, are operated mainly through private-public partnerships. Also, we see both renewable and traditional energy sources being used by industry and households. Island in the Sun 2050 The global temperature accelerates faster than predicted by the year 2030. Global institutions and the leading economies such as China and the United States try to work feverishly towards reversing the damage done to the environment. A new global culture is introduced that places the environment first and changes the consumption patterns and lifestyles of persons living across the world. The Caribbean in this future is experiencing increased trade between the islands. Economies are thriving because energy costs are down. We are also benefiting from the growth of the health and wellness sectors and ecotourism. Community governance is at its best because women are central to these systems. We've shifted to barter systems with trading in goods and services as opposed to cash. In this future, we're also more sensitive to our environments. We have a better relationship with our environments. We understand the importance of ecosystem services to our well-being, and therefore we're more prepared to protect the resources upon which we depend. With this new era, 
the Caribbean increases intra-regional trade through an integrated economy and decision-making is regionally driven and inclusive. Governments place less emphasis on economic growth and more attention is given to social indicators such as human well-being and development. The Harder They Come 2050 At the global level, regional rivalry is increasing, which is compounded by weak coordination among global institutions. Protectionist policies are becoming more widely used and global challenges such as climate change are no longer at the forefront of diplomatic discussions. This leads to a significant reduction in environmental resources. In the heart of the come scenario, we foresee um, a decline in economic growth coupled with inequality, rising inequality I should say, as well as an increase in crime which is spurned by the latter. These acts of crime increase tension in society and this is particularly so within the Caribbean context as governments are very centralized and services are not readily available. Civil society has very little influence on policy, particularly in groups like the youth and the elderly where they feel completely disenfranchised from the process. These vulnerable groups are given very little support and they are at a critical juncture as we speak because they believe that the time is right or time is near for them to be heard and they are not asking for it, they are demanding it. The Caribbeans struggle to maintain economic growth and are faced with unsustainable levels of debt. Economic activity in the region is geared towards mass market tourism, limited activity in financial services and small-scale agricultural production. Pirates of the Caribbean 2050 Never seen anything like it. The unexpected happens. The US economy collapses in the year 2046 and the devaluation of the US dollar pushes most of the Western world into an economic depression. Global institutions have been disbanded and border security is critical to protecting limited resources. There is a significant reduction in global trade, limiting the importation of key resources to the Caribbean, such as food, oil and medical supplies. Regional cooperation is almost non-existent with countries becoming increasingly insular. Reduced investment and limited job opportunities push many persons into poverty. What we're seeing there is sort of a prolonged economic depression affecting the, de the developed world. If we want to translate that into what its potential effects could be on the Caribbean, we see a sort of breakdown of the regional hegemony uh, economies working together, they sort of starting to fragment and the impact that that is, you know, regional cooperation is going to go out the window. Under this scenario, we, with this, this sort of breakdown in society that would follow from all the economic collapse is people need incomes. The state is not providing incomes. The job opportunities that the state used to generate and through the state intervention in the in the wider economy are going to dry up. That would probably lead to a growth of an underground economy. They're going to try and maintain law and order. So they're going to put an emphasis on policing. Uh, employment opportunities are going to dry up. People will do whatever they can to earn a living. With the breakdown in law and order and a concentration on public order, other types of crime, white collar crime, uh, will be less policed. There'll be more of an emphasis on violent crime 
and combat, combating that. Governments are going to have less money to spare. It means that they're going to invest less in education and other social services. That will have a knock-on effect as well. They're not going to be able to support uh, in industry or other, for other areas of the, econ of the economy. We also see water utilities, for example, will not have the funds even to maintain the systems that we have. Uh, so you'll see a breakdown, in, an increasing breakdown in the provision of water services because they just cannot afford it. Increased trafficking of drugs and arms creates unstable societies where crime is the main concern. A significant amount of public funding is spent on security and law enforcement. And very little funding is left for environmental issues and resource management. So, the unexpected has happened. But what if the Caribbean works together after the crisis? This is Redemption of Paradise 2050. Global power shifts to the east and some of the international institutional arrangements remain in place, strengthened by support from emerging economies such as China and India. The region increases cooperation rather than becoming isolated. In the Caribbean, there is a greater expediency and political will for regional integration, where the larger islands of Trinidad and Jamaica are at the forefront of these efforts. Despite having slow growth, there are some improvements in economic activity across the islands. We see under this scenario a growth in, in regional identity, regional cooperation. But that regional cooperation could, could in fact be somewhat one-sided with those two dominant economies making inroads into the smaller states. Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica are going to be very much the economic powerhouses pushing the economies of the Caribbean. The economies of other countries are going to be closely integrated with those economies. They're going to benefit from those economies. But those two countries are going to, in this scenario, are going to be very much the ones, the powerhouses, and they're going to be driving regional cooperation on their terms. On their terms, they're going to be looking at things like mobility of people, level of qualification, qualifications, access to services. So in terms of environmental policy and in terms of environmental stewardship, we would see a cadre of people, a number of people well-educated uh, with concerns for the environment, but given the restrictions there would be on government expenditure, there wouldn't be that many posts for it, and it would be seen mostly as supporting economic activity and not being supported for the intrinsic value of the environment. The environment is seen very much as an economic good, as an economic input. If we think of what this might mean also for the provision of water services, the emphasis will be very much on the provision of water services rather than on things like waste management, and wastewater management services. Now that we've explored some possible futures, do you think we are ready for the uncertainties that lie ahead? Scenarios can help us with our long-term planning in identifying both threats and opportunities of the future. In order to cope with tomorrow, we must start today to think about how our actions create our future. I ask, what do these futures mean to you?